We're here with Kate Wilhelm, Chief Operating Officer, Senior Vice President of Seisler Media. Kate, May is National Mental Health Awareness Month. As somebody who hires and directs dozens of people at the workplace, what challenges have you faced the last 14 months uh, in terms of maintaining a happy, thriving work environment? Well, hey, Glenn, it's great to talk with you, and I'm really excited to be able to have this feature where we get to talk about what our culture and what it's like to be part of Seisler Media. I think, as you know, and many of our staff know, mental health awareness is a point of personal interest and passion for me. And so it's something that's embedded in our leadership culture. I think in terms of the challenges that have been presented over the last 14 months, we've all faced a ton of them of varying degree. But to make a thriving, positive work environment, we've all had to find ways to get through it all together and remind ourselves that none of us are going through any of our individual circumstances alone, that none of us are going through any of our client projects alone, and that what makes us thrive is when we collaborate, we work together, and we have those opportunities to feed and thrive from each other and know that we are not just working in our own little silos. So if anything, these last 14 months, despite being in all varying places and being boxes on screens now, I think we've built a more collaborative culture than we had even before we were all sent home. All right, well, let's let's dive into that a little bit. I know you care very much about the well-being of your team and of their families. How have you been able to stay abreast of how everybody's been doing? How do you maintain a culture when everybody is remote? I'll tell you, it takes extra time. There's no question about it. You, you lose those lunchtime conversations where, you know, people share stories. You, you lose those interactions in the hallways or there's the – the moment where you walk past someone's office or cubicle and you're not in a meeting with them and you can just look at their face and see they're not having a great day or perhaps they're having a great day and you want to be excited with them. So the best way to stay in touch is to stay present in all of your employees' lives. But respect that they're individuals, they have their own privacy. Um, and so you just really want to find ways to stay connected. We wanted to create moments that are joint gatherings for our staff check-ins, so we've increased the amount of times that our staff gets together as a group. We've also encouraged staff to get together in smaller group settings, and we also have restructured the firm to create less of a linear organizational chart and one that has more depth to deepen the mentorship structure. So particularly the newer members of our team feel as though they know who to go to and who they can talk to. We want to create a culture of transparency, and that, to me, is the most important way to create a thriving, positive culture, is putting transparency and communication at the forefront when you can't be in front of everyone every day. So along those lines, I know a part of your philosophy is keeping an open channel. You just mentioned a feedback from employees. Tell me a little bit about how that works. I think everybody has to be open to feedback. I know I am. Even as the COO, I tell people I'm, I'm no more or less open to the feedback because I need it to be better myself. And I think that's something that each and every one of us needs to remember. Feedback, whether it's positive or constructive, helps us grow as individuals, helps us grow as members of our team and as leaders and professionals in our industry. And so maintaining that sort of consistent feedback loop. And also asking the question, you know, not being afraid to say to whether it's a colleague or a leader within your organization, how am I doing? How did this work out? Or, you know, I'm sensing that you're not really happy with how that worked out. Can you give me some feedback on it? And be willing to hear the feedback and really understand what it means. And I think that is the type of culture, again, where you go to that transparency, that open line of communication that really will help not just the individual, but will help everyone collectively. A lot of success goes into hiring the right people, and you've been adding folks all along. Uh, Beyond looking at somebody's resume, calling their references, what are some of the things that you do to make sure somebody that you bring in thrives at Seisler Media? So I think the total now is seven employees that we've onboarded since the onset of COVID, meaning we've onboarded seven new employees in a remote environment. One of the things that I've made sure that I've changed in how I interview potential employees for our firm is not just asking about work experience, work history, and some of the more standard interview set of questions. I've taken it to be my role to ask what I call the culture questions. As we work in a remote environment, understanding if an employee
employee or if a prospective employee is going to be the right cultural fit is of paramount importance anymore. Um, to know that they are going to be able to blend in and mesh well will help them thrive. And if it's not going to be a good cultural fit, then that's not setting them up for success. And our role as leaders in the firm is to set every single individual, current employees and prospective, up for the, pair of, for the best success that they can have for our firm and for our clients. And so it's important to me to ask these critical questions about culture, work style, um, their approaches to work, to understand that in this remote environment, how do you plan to work with your colleagues and peers? How will you um, add to this culture that we've now created here at Facebook Media? Very good. Kate, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.